In the previous video in this series, I got as far as starting to work on a version of CPM to run on this Z80 project and made some good progress. We got it to the point where it appeared to be reading the floppy disks and it was booting to the CPM command prompt. Don't know quite how well it was working at that point, um, but I have been working on it since and made some progress and so we'll go through in this video and see how far I'm getting through getting CPM working on our project. Um, someone did complain in the previous video that I wasn't getting excited enough when these uh, things work so just a quick celebration here yippee okay so that's enough of that on with the job and uh, we'll go and look at the PC see uh, what changes I've made to the software we will then upload the new software to the machine and see if it actually works. So we'll go to the PC, have a look at the software and uh, I'll show what changes I've made. So looking at the software, the start is fairly similar. I've added a few more equates because we will need some of these to handle the video output. So remember that we're writing directly to the screen. We're not using a dumb terminal or anything like that. So there is no inbuilt interpretation of the control characters. Some of them are catered for in the interrupt handler. So for example, the shift keys are catered for by the interrupt handler and we don't need to worry about that. But uh, characters such as carriage return and uh, line feed, we can't just filter those out when we read the character from the keyboard because we do need to still send those if we're using um, the serial port to talk to a dumb terminal, for example, or if we're trying to read or write a punch tape reader. So we can't just um, eradicate them totally. So I'll show you how I've handled those in a few minutes. The startup is similar uh, to what we had before. We switched to bank zero, update the keyboard interrupt handler vector, and then we jump to the cold boot routine for CPM. That will return to this point. We then clear the video on the display of the computer and we write the welcome screen, which in this case is just the um, copyright message that's um, built into this version of CPM. I will be adding some additional text specifically for this machine, but for now it's just a single line of the copyright. Uh, we then move to the next line and we jump to the command handler as we did previously. I have made some minor changes to that so that it now, um, when it calls for carriage return and new line, it doesn't print those directly on the screen if it's writing to the screen. It will still send them if it's writing to a printer or punch tape uh, reader or writer, for example. But if we now, I'll scroll to the important parts of this, which is actually in the BIOS now. So, if we look to the console out, this is pretty much the same as it was. I've tidied it up slightly, um, but what it does now is it checks to see if uh, the character is a carriage return. And if it is, it sets the cursor position to the start of a new line. Uh, that's not done by CPM. It expects the dumb terminal or whatever it's talking to to do that in response to receiving the carriage return character, but we have to do that here because we are writing directly to the screen. It then checks to see if it was a line feed. If it's not a carriage return, it checks to see if the character is a line feed. If not, it just carries on, prints the character to screen after calculating where on the screen it should be placed, which I'll come back to in a few seconds. If it is a line feed, then what the system does is it bumps the line pointer down. I've introduced the line pointer for the cursor. CPM only uses the cursor position on a single line because, as I said, it expects whatever machine it's talking to to handle the scrolling of the uh, screen. But we have to do that ourselves here, which is what this block of code is doing now. So if it receives a line feed, it can't go to the start of the next line because it might not have received a carriage return it might only be a line feed that's required in which case the cursor has to stay in the same position along the line so what it does it moves down an entire whole line it then checks to see if it needs to scroll the screen so in other words has it got to the bottom of the screen and if it has there's now another function 
which just scrolls all the data in the video RAM up effectively by one line. And it then moves the uh, video pointer to point to the beginning of the last line. The next thing it does, um, if and if it was a carriage return or line feed, it doesn't print the character, it just then exits after saving the new cursor line value. Um, if it's not a carriage return or line feed, it gets the value which is supplied in register C and it sends that to the video display after using the cursor line and cursor position values to calculate where on the screen to plot the character. So fairly simple, that's all that's required here. We do need the support functions of course for um, scrolling the screen. I'll just try and find that. So we've got the clear video RAM function that I showed uh, earlier for clearing the video RAM. And then we have the scroll screen function. It's very simple, so not a great deal involved in doing that. But this tidies up the handling of the screen. The next thing we need to do, just scroll back up. I've already, as I showed in the previous video, taken care of the read, that's the floppy disk read function. I still have the uh, drive selection and side selection edited out. Um, this will be very easy to implement. I just need to pull the current drive value and insert it into this and then uncomment the lines and that should allow a uh, different drive to be selected and the same with the side. What I've now done is try to implement the write function. Very similar to the read of course, it's just using a write instead of the read and it's taking the data from the DMA uh, address, so wherever the DMA is pointed to and that's set by CPM, that's where it's getting the data from to write to the floppy disk. And then it's using uh, our DMA system to uh, transfer the data to the floppy drive controller. At least that's what we hope it's going to do. I've also changed the way that um, the drive is handled. Remember it was clunking on, it was basically deselecting the head um, every time it read a new sector. And that was just for initial testing. Because that's working, I've now stopped it doing that. It will read an entire, uh, in fact, it will run an entire session without unloading the head. So after we finish writing or reading, it will wait until it's seen 15 index pulses, about three seconds, before it disengages the head and shuts down the drive. And um, that's what we want, that's how they normally work. So all this is now in place. Um, what we can do is uh, compile this, but we'll go back to the uh, computer, upload the new compiled file and see if we're getting any further in our CPM. So back at the computer, I'll dim the lights a bit and try and cut down the flicker as much as I can. Uh, so what we'll do now is essentially the same thing we did in the previous video. We'll upload the file from the PC that we've just had a look at it goes to the same address. I'll just send the file. So we now have the file in our Z80 computer RAM. And uh, what we should be able to do now is run that. The only difference you're going to see between this and the previous video at this point is it will clear the screen and it should show the sign on message and then the command prompt. You'll also hear it um, behaving differently because it's not going to keep uh, engaging and disengaging the head. It will just read the entire um, directory track in one go. Uh, so let's get this uh, running. So as you can see it started up the way we'd expect it to. We've got the copyright notice at the top of the screen followed by the prompt. And uh, as I said, the screen handling should now be correct. So if we try and do a directory read, it should do what we expect it to. And you can see it's behaving exactly the way it should. If we do just some nonsense, we should get that repeated with a question mark. And uh, we should also see that the system has the ability to scroll. And indeed it does get some more text so you can see what it's actually doing. So saying no file, 
So this disc is just a formatted uh, disc. It's been formatted using the utility I showed before for single density, uh, 128 bytes per sector, and the formatting is suitable for our machine here. It's what uh, our machine expects to be on the disc. Um, but of course I've now, in theory at least, implemented the ability to write. So what we'll do is a very simple test. We've tried the DIR command and we can see there are no files. And that's what the CPM system should be doing here. But what we can now do is uh, try and create a file. And the easiest way to do that is just with the inbuilt command in CPM, which is save a space. The number of blocks, so these are memory blocks that it's talking about, and we want to uh, just do one space and then the file name. So I'm going to use a file name of test. I won't give it an extension. Now when I press enter what should happen is it should read the first block from RAM and save it to the next available um, sectors on the uh, floppy disk and it should update the directory track as well to show that it's done that. So we'll try this, keep it on the drive and see if it actually does anything. Okay, we saw the head move twice, once to write the data, I hope, and once to update the directory. Now if this has worked, if we now try the DIR command again, we should actually get a listing of what's on the disk, and in this case it should just be a single file, so fingers crossed. Okay, and that's working, so yippee, another celebration there. So we'll do another file, give it a different name, make sure that the system can handle multiple files. So again, save, number of blocks, and we'll call this one test2. Do another one. Call it test3. Okay, so if we now do directory listing, we should have three files, which we do. So clearly our um, system is really starting to come to life now. It still needs more work. It uh, needs um, the uh, in-out byte mechanism implementing and also the um, functions for writing to some of the hardware devices, the reader, writer, and the serial port etc need to be put in place. The actual functions are there but they're just stub functions at the moment. But you can see that uh, our CPM system is really starting to come to life. The next step will be to uh, write a simple program to bring the version of CPM we've got so far onto the floppy disk and then I'll write a simple second stage bootloader and at that point we should be able to boot directly from floppy disk into our current version of CPM. So it's getting exciting now. Our Z80 computer is really starting to come to life. And uh, once we get an operating system, it will become much more useful.